Well, I did it. This I did it. I drank neat vodka. Then I put a note on the door. It said, it's over. Love, Paula. Then I took his reproduction Armani underpants, put them in a bag on the mat. Then I hid. Mastermind. Only I never closed the window. 2am, I wake up, he's looming over me. Fuck you, Paula, he said. Fuck you, Michael, I said. That went on for a bit. I said, Michael, I'm sorry, but I have to demonstrate my desire to provide a decent home for my daughter. He tried snogging. Didn't work. Well, it did for about two minutes, but anyway. Cut to me an hour later. More vodka had been swilled. More tears had watered the ashtray. I was doing it. I didn't even know why I was doing it. Finally... I got the note off the door and stuck it on my forehead. I said, Michael, it's not that I don't think you're a decent bloke underneath, but who's got a spade big enough to shovel off all that shit? That's how I got my eye. I woke up in the morning and I swear I felt like Bambi. I lay there for a bit, just listening to the sounds coming in the window. And I thought... This is nice. It totally misrepresents the book. It's like, oh, you know, you don't understand the business side of things, which I don't. But what I do know, if it had been written by a bloke, it wouldn't be packaged like a cupcake. <laughs> I'm so sick of all this shit. It's the same with the fertility nightmare. I feel so betrayed. By what? All the stuff I was fed in college. Feminist ideology, the lie that you can have a career and a family. Well, obviously that hasn't turned out too well. We should send them the bill for our IUIs and IVFs. I don't think we can blame second wave feminism for our ambivalence to having a kid. <laughs> not ambivalent. Well, no, you're not now, you just realise the boat's leaving the dock. But, I mean, before you were always changing the deadline, remember? You know, once I've finished the play, once I get the poem published, once I've finished the book. Are you blaming me? No. No, I'm not blaming you. But I'm saying that we need to take some responsibility for the situation. Lots of women have babies at 41. I thought I could too. Okay. I just don't think it's Gloria Steinem's fault that we can't get pregnant. Whose fault is it then? Mine, I suppose, because I was writing my stupid book. I didn't say that. Ugh. All the doctors ever talk about are my ageing eggs, my old maternal eggs. We're in the middle of an IVF round and, oh, what a surprise, your sperm's on a sabbatical. Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Let's forget it. All I'm saying is, we can't blame Dr. Dorix or Bella Abslick or anybody else for her fuck-up. You mean my fuck-up? Oh, Jesus. Why do I feel as if I'm in a Wendy Wasserstein screenplay? <laughs> I don't know. It's our wedding anniversary today. And I've got to go and get a dildo cam shoved up my fanny by Dr. Dorix. So can we just uh, stop talking about this and repress it or suppress it? Whichever one is more appropriate in this instance, keep this train on track. Apart from anything, it's the arrogance. The unbelievable arrogance that this middle-aged man thinks that everybody else's behaviour, his ex's behaviour, is always in some direct reaction to him. He was saying, my God, you were telling me you don't think of us as objects, we're not possessions. That's what you say. And yet you're standing there complaining that your wife omitted to forgive you. I have to ask, Tom, why the hell should she when all the time you're dreaming of somebody else? I mean, Jesus. Earlier you were saying that all the time she was dying, you meanwhile were thinking of me. Is that right? You're seriously demanding my sympathy for the terrible hurt you're claiming she's done to you. I mean, even you must see, Tom. Even you must see it. Oh, I know of being a successful businessman. Sweet wife, me adoring you too. You're richly deserving of compassion. Your life is really jolly hard. 
But even you must see that the balance of sympathy in this case, maybe, just maybe, lies somewhere else.